message for the ladies and gentlemen around the world and all the ships at sea. We all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us. So choose wisely. Subscribe to It's Eric Nagel, wherever shows are found, on whatever platform you choose. And as always, leave us a positive review. Would you kindly? It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe. The next voice you hear. It's Eric Nagel. Hello and welcome to another edition of It's Eric Nagel. That is myself. Over in the upside down is Trev's and Dev's is Trevor. Uh, Giddles, Hello. Giddles is uh, MIA for this particular episode. He's on an endeavor. No, wait, that's me. He took Trevor up on one of his endeavors. He wasn't using it, so Giddles borrowed it. And uh, he is out and about, so I think he'll be back next week. Welcome to the program. 651 Smithers is the phone number. 651-764-8437 if you wish to be a part of the program. It's Eric Nagel across the board on social media to interact with the show and whatnot. It is the holiday season. It's hard to avoid holiday topics and holiday stuff. This particular week is when a lot of companies and corporations are having their holiday parties. So bars and restaurants are jam-packed immediately after work. And uh, there's no point of going around anywhere in New York City to try to go eat dinner. Because somewhere is having a holiday party and is going to ruin your good time. That is a fact. Did you have your holiday party for the place that you work at? I did, and I was told it was a very good time. And I was also told that I had a very good time. So you don't remember it? Uh, no, I, there there was some dancing involved. I was yelled at by some uh, other people for not putting my raffle ticket in the raffle in time. The best part that I found out afterwards, though, is there was a photo booth there where you could take a picture, say, with your whole show or with some fellow employees, right. and then email it to yourself. So, like, I took a couple of good ones, and then I took some really, like, I just kept photobombing people, thinking it was funny. Right. I found out that every single one of the pictures taken got uploaded to a main website that everyone the company can see. Right. So there's a million pictures uh, in this now, you know, New York cluster album with me just making dumb faces. And I'm like, oh, come on. That's going to be like, great so I, come uh, performance review time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But then I was when I said that to someone else in the in the company, they're like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, I mean, like I'm making a bunch of stupid faces. I'm such an ass. And they're like. I literally just took like four pictures of myself flipping off the camera when I thought no one was looking. And now it's up on the uh, the major website for your company. <laughs> the company website. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, no holiday parties for for myself, which is fine with me because I never in, fully enjoyed the holiday parties when I was with the other company because they had some really lame ones that they would do in the lobby of the of the uh, of the facility. And then normally they used to have these other parties at the Manhattan Center where yes. they would have a DJ spinning, they'd have bar open, and they'd maybe have some catering, whatever. And that just doesn't sound like a good time to me because going to the one at the, the holiday party in the facility itself, you see all these people like, how do I not know half these people that work here? Because they work, everybody works at all different times. Like I'm never around for the night crew. For the yeah. night staff that's there doing night shows or, or maintenance or whatever they're doing, work, because we were the morning show. So we'd be in for the morning and then most of the uh, most of the day. But I never really saw a lot of the people at night. And because these parties were always at night, the night staff's there. You don't see most of the people that you know. So all these other people in the company are there that you barely know. And just like school, everyone pairs off into groups. These people are friends with these people, so they only hang out with those people. Nobody's going around and socializing with the other groups unless they know the people. So you, you walk there, and there's just little clusters of people everywhere until they have to take the big group photo so that the company can bullshit the subscribers or anybody else that we all get along and everything's okay here at this company. See, I'm the opposite. I'm that guy who walks around and just interjects myself into random people I've never met before and try to make friends because I want as many people to know that I work for this company as possible. Well, they do now based on your photo bombing. Yeah, apparently. But that see, but that's my point. It's a great icebreaker. 
Yeah. So like I since I do mornings, no one sees me in the afternoon or even during the day much anymore. Because no one in my company, you know, they do the whole, they walk in, they put their coat down, and they go visit their friend on the other side of the building, and they get their coffee. No one actually starts working in my building until around 12 o'clock. So, I I just ran around and met as many people as possible, other DJs I never met before. And because it was it was actually at a really cool place, they had one of those, uh, they had everything from ping pong to bowling, billiards, and then they had one of those basketball games, you know, like at the arcade, right. at Jersey Shore or something. And I started doing a dollar a shot, and people started going against me. I only lost like a dollar out of like four people. That's not a um, that's not a positive achievement. It was ten shots for four people, so like I could have lost forty dollars. I only lost a dollar out of four people. But does it ever sink into your head that this is a work event? It did around the fifteenth Jameson. And that, by that point, there was no holding back, and you're like, no, oh, I'm, no, just, no, I'm just no, going to no, go no, for no. it. It's fine. It's fine. I don't know how that is a positive thing, but. Well, th- here's how I rate it. If I was the last one and to be carried out of the bar, yeah, I messed up. But there are, there were still salespeople just. The thing, it was supposed to end at 7. And because, like, the head of sales where they extended it, they were just ripping them back more than me. Yeah. Dancing on tables. So I'm fine. You just got to not be that guy because there's always that one person at the end of the holiday party that you see in the hall the next day. Right. And I and I've we've talked before I think last week with Gittles about this all like you don't make eye contact after the Christmas party usually because it's like you're never going to talk to that person ever again because you never talk to them normally. Why would you talk to them now just after one Christmas party? Right. But there's always that one guy from the party that got so wrecked that you see him in the hallway and you just point and go, "Ha ha. Ha ha." That was me, like my second year working there. So I made, sh- I always made sure. Since then, I'm not the that guy. You, you might have been that guy this year when everybody looks at the photos and they're all going, "Aha!" I uh-huh. made stupid faces. There's a kid who literally was just flipping the camera off for fun. So I think that's worse. Like he's the only one in the picture just flipping the photo booth off. So I'm in a picture with like 20 people making a stupid face, and he's just there by himself. So you had a good time at your holiday party. Um, Sure. One of the things I did enjoy doing when you do go to work holiday parties is I used to look around and see how much bullshit there was at these parties because there's people who were faking being friends with other people or, um, you know, exchanging pleasantries, if you will. But I like to look around and and think, who's not going to be here for the next party? Like, who's not going to be here for next year's Christmas party? And oh, Man, you're a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. No, I keep it to myself. I don't tell people that. Um, I Just while I'm there, I'm just looking around. I'm like, who's not going to be here? And if you can't really put together who would be a good candidate for not being here anymore, chances are it's probably yourself. So I, po- I posted that out on social media uh, the other day just to uh, brighten everybody's holiday season so that when they go to their holiday parties, they're like, wait a minute, am I going to be here next year? I like imposing that little bit of self-doubt. You're a sick man. No, it's, a sick, it's, sick it's, man. it's rational thinking. Because you could sit there, you could even do it if you no. had good friends with you there at, at on your show or what have you. You go, you and you guys are drinking, and you just go, all right, who's not going to be here next year? Who do you think is going to get the axe? Oh, you don't want to put that self-doubt in anyone. <laughs> sure you do. No, because I'm making I'm the Mr. Burns like, excellent um, fingers. No, because I'm going to start thinking like um, Little Giants. Like, what's that play? It's a pass to Johnny. Pass to Johnny? I'm Johnny. So it's like, who's not going to be here next year? Well, someone who probably doesn't do any work. Johnny. That's me. Johnny's not going to be there next year. I've yeah. never saw Little Giants, by the way. That's the Rick Moranis movie, right? Isn't he the coach? You, are, you sir, are sad, sad So You've never seen Little Giants? No, I didn't. It wasn't, it wasn't in my time Mary period. With children? Rick Moran. How have you not seen everything Rick Dude Moran Mary didn't with, do that much? What, Ed O'Neill? Yeah, Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill's the second star in that. It's Rick Moranis and Ed O'Neill, the top two. Oh, man, maybe I should watch it then. I love Ed O'Neill. Yeah, he's great in the movie. Speaking of Ed O'Neill and the holidays, I put out a feeler on social media not too long ago about trying to get a copy of the movie Dutch, which is a movie he did in the early 90s. And yes. it is impossible to find a reasonably priced copy of this movie. Uh, some people were pointing out, oh, you, it's like it's right here on Amazon. It's right here on this. I said, did you read the description about this? They're a different region. They're, like, they're the European region for Blu-rays and DVDs. They're, that's okay. not available here. It's, it's from Sweden or it's from Germany or something like that. Still expensive, 
But just because it shows up on Amazon doesn't mean it's available. You have to read shit. I looked all over the place. I looked on eBay. I looked at uh, other websites that sell, you know, discount movies and, and what have you. And there's no way to find an American copy that is under under $30. Oh, dude, but you can get the all... Australian copy for $7. And it won't they're play here. Far. It won't play up here um, oh. because of the region code. Oh. They're all like $50 or more. And in the movie, I love the movie. I'm not spending $50 for a, a physical copy of the movie. I'm not doing it. And then other people were write me and they said, just torrent it. I'm not about that. I'm not that kind of, I'm not no. that guy. I, He's an American, people. I buy the movies. I pay for the music if I want it because I actually want the physical copy if possible. Or if I'm buying it on iTunes, I want, you know, my own version of it. I can't find a physical copy. I beg. I said, if anybody has it, somebody told me, he's like, oh, try Goodwill. No, you go try Goodwill. I'm not going to go digging through bins trying to find the damn movie. I just want to find a place that I can purchase it. Or somebody that has it that was willing to make a deal. And that was not the case. I can't believe that this is the situation I'm dealing with with this movie. And I can't think of a time when I'm looking for a movie that you can't find it like this nowadays. Yeah, you, there's a bunch of sketchy websites actually out there. Yeah, I don't trust them. Anything dot biz is not yeah, going gonna, gonna, yeah, to get my credit card information. I'm sorry. I've never, I haven't never. I have dealt with a oh situation like this in so long. I can't believe fifty nine ninety five for Dutch American on Amazon. That's See, this is what I'm talking about, and I don't know why this is. It's not an out. It's not like a banned movie, or a movie that you know that the movie companies are trying to forget was ever out. Like, um, like say like Disney's Song of the South. You know, they're not going to ever officially put that out. And in fact, uh. the company tries to forget that uh, it ever existed, other than they use the song Zippity Doo in the and Briar Splash. Rabbit stuff. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love Splash Mountain. It's the best ride at Disney. Right, but that's all that's left from Song of the South. You'll oh, never, no, right. You'll never see that movie um, legally, uh, a copy of that movie, ever printed ever again. And that's been that way for at least 40 years that that movie has disappeared. But it's not that kind of situation. It's Dutch starring Ed O'Neill. And I can't find... And it's... it's look... People always say, oh, the Thanksgiving go-to movie is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, right? Yes, and I would agree with that. Right. But Dutch is another great Thanksgiving movie that nobody oh. remembers. I mean, nobody remembers it unless you mention it, and nobody has a copy of it. Nobody owns it. I'm not going to lie. Only because you mentioned it on social media did I use it at work the other day because I used the line, "No one, nothing burps like bacon. Nothing burps was... better than bacon. Yeah. Yeah. A classic I, line in the history of cinema. And I had to dig deep to find that on, on the YouTubes. Right. And it probably wasn't the best copy either. No, 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 no. But through the power of editing. Right. Wait, maybe because it wasn't... Shooter McGavin could... plays his dad. Okay, wait a minute here. I can get you the VHS, it looks like, for 12 bucks. Who the fuck wants that? You're you're smart. You can figure out how to transfer. I don't that. want that. I'm pissed that I have vinyl that I got to transfer to digital. I don't want to. I don't want vinyl. I don't want VHS. I don't want any of this, you know, uh, archaic nonsense that it seems to be in vogue right now. I want clean digital copy and a hard copy. That's it. I don't know why this is so. It's so it, it falls on deaf ears with people. I don't know why people are amazed when I say that I want the physical copy. People just like torrent it. I don't want to torrent it because one, I, I'd rather pay for the movie. Two, you don't know what other kind of viral wear shit is on there when you when you torrent something like that. So I'm not taking that chance. I don't need the movie that bad. I just want a physical copy of it, and this blows people's mind. Why? Why do you still have physical copies? Because one day something's going to happen and all this online shit is going to fuck up and people are going to lose their stuff and there's they either have to try to get it all back or buy everything again. I want to have the physical copy. That's just me. People have I have bookshelves. You've been to my place. I have bookshelves that were built for books, but they have DVDs and Blu-rays in this place. And when you go and you look at it, it's thousands of them. It looks pretty cool. As a background setting, it looks really nice. It looks exactly the same as if you had all these different leather-bound books. Yeah, it does. And that, you, but ones you will never read. Right. 
but I'll watch these things. I have a bunch of there, uh, a bunch of those movies in there that I've never watched yet, and I'm still making my way through the list. Like, like Little Giants, apparently. Yeah, I've never watched Little Giants. All right, so thirty nine ninety nine, cheapest one I found. Yeah, not Great not TV. worth it. I'm not spending forty bucks. And where are you buying it from? What website? eBay. Oh, somebody on eBay is doing it. Yeah, for thirty nine ships. This is from the U.S. U.S. copy. Uh, yeah, I need a Region One Blu-ray or DVD. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's if anyone ha- is anyone listening has it, you know, and are willing to part ways with it, contact will, me. Let me know. But you will pay less than thirty nine ninety nine. Other than that, I, yeah, exactly. I'm not even paying twenty nine ninety nine for it, and even nineteen ninety nine is pushing it. Twice twenty one dollars. Where? No, I, I think that's that's the offer I would make you just just to piss you off. Twenty one dollars. If I had it now, I'd really have to mull it over. Do you ha- don't you have a VHS player though? I do, but it's not for d- recreational use. It's for dubbing stuff off to digitize. That's it. I have uh, old college shows and other stuff that I've been transferring over using both the cassette players and the the uh, VHS rack that I have built in the studio to transfer stuff over. But that's it. It's not going to be. I'm not going to sit there and watch a movie on VHS. Yeah, for twelve bucks, I'm going to get it in VHS. You just throw it in there. You digitize it. You'll be fine. No, feel free to do it for me because I'm not doing it. It'd be another. So it'd be thirteen dollars and thirteen dollars in shipping. Oh, Canada. Jeez, that's what's coming from Canada. Yep, not not interested. But it's oh, it's still sealed in the shrink wrap. You don't know that they. You can shrink wrap anything now and make it look like it's brand new. It's oh, so okay. cheap and easy to do that. It doesn't mean anything. All right, well, I'm just like I'm help me to help you here, man. Moving on, uh, the consumer did a review this week for something that I knew was coming, and I finally found it in a store where it was the hybrid of the Hershey bar and Reese's Pieces together. I've heard of this uh, conjuncture, and I tried it, and it was delicious. I enjoyed it, and I posted it, and the consumer review is up there on uh, the consumer on Instagram, or just search hashtag the consumer on. Instagram or Twitter, you'll be able to find everything there. And well, how can it go wrong? I didn't think it was wrong at all. I thought it tasted delicious. Now well, somebody, that's what I'm saying, like you got peanut butter and chocolate. I don't see how like you could literally get. It's a classic up combination that's been going on for 40 years now. Yes, I enjoyed it, and I'm not a big chocolate bar person at all. But I, I was like, this isn't bad. If I had to eat a chocolate bar, I would eat this one. Somebody did write to me and said you barely taste the Reese's Pieces in it, and that is a fair assumption. You know, you taste the candy shell. You're not really tasting a whole lot of the peanut butter within the milk chocolate of the Hershey's bar. Okay. Somebody else wrote, stop mixing Reese's Pieces into everything, which is also another fair point because Reese's has been doing that. They've been mixing Reese's Pieces into the actual Reese's peanut butter cups. Yes, which I actually am. I'm wondering if I should try that. Always try it, but I'm not, I would rather have the regular cups than the cups with the Reese's Pieces in it. So I mm. totally get that. And uh, if you aren't aren't aware, Hershey's owns Reese's. At one point, that was not the case, but that is the case currently that Hershey's owns Reese's. So why not take some of your popular products and do a remix kind of thing, especially going into the holidays? People will buy it. It'll it'll, uh, you know, generate some some uh, quick fascination, like an easy money grab. And then they Mm -hmm. phase it out in a couple of months. Like it'll be gone by Valentine's Day, if not. Easter, those those hybrid bars never last long. They're just gimmicks. But there How is some. How can you reinvent chocolate at this point? That's what it's come down to. It depends, man. The chocolate can be really crappy depending on the company that's making it. Like, well, I agree. That's why I have that pickled chocolate here for you. I, I know people that like that love Nestle's chocolate. Nestle's chocolate is okay. It's not bad, but it's okay. It's not as good as Hershey's chocolate. But Hershey's chocolate is not as good as Giardelli's chocolate. I love Giardelli's chocolate. The dark chocolate where it's 70% or above, like Twilight, I think it's called. See, I, I import my chocolate. I'm all about the pure Dutch chocolate. Right. It's something with the cows over there that just, I, I, it tastes different. I, don't, I love Dutch chocolate. Because it's cow pie love, chocolate. That's exactly why. I can actually feel the bits of hay in it. Right. You chocolate does have differences, especially like you said, depending where it's from. You know, uh, I guess chocolate from Holland has a, a distinct taste, 
chocolate from uh, Switzerland Swiss is chocolate. really good. Uh, chocolate from Germany, too. Certain parts of Germany are really good. They all have a distinct ta- taste in the way that it's manufactured and, and put together. You got to go around the world and try different things. But It's like you want to do the Epcot for chocolate. Is there enough different chocolate in the world to actually do an around the world like Epcot does? Well, you got your Hershey's from here, so you, got, you do the USA well, chocolate. We're not going to break it down in each individual product, but do you think there is enough? Do, do, are there enough countries or do, regions that have their own distinct version of chocolate to do an around the world? I think you could hit the. I think you could hit like a top ten. I think you're right. Maybe that's something we should explore. Our next endeavor, because there's chocolate from England that I know people love that I'm not a big fan of. You know, Cadbury being one. Those Lion bars. Oh, Cadbury being another. I know the Mars bars are big over there, even though it's an American company, but they only make Mars bars now over in the UK. Yeah, there's definitely, we could definitely, because there's only like 10 countries in Epcot. So, yeah, we could definitely do it. All right. Something Let's, like we there. should copyright it now before Walt hears us. And <clears throat> but one other thing I want to do for the consumer is something that Trevor brought to my attention, and that has to do with uh, with KFC. Trevor, what what's going on with KFC? All right. So, KFC lately um, kind of went, the, remember the Pringles, the small cans that they did just for Thanksgiving? Right. They were all just Thanksgiving flavors. Well, I don't know if you've seen the latest commercial where it's the Colonel doing um, the dance from Dirty Dancing with Mrs. Butter- Buttersworth. No, you haven't seen. Oh, it's 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 really funny because it's just the Colonel sitting there, and then it, and Bill Medley starts playing. Now I've had, and when he turns around, it's just Mrs. Buttersworth running at him, and he picks her up just like Dirty Dancing. And she puts her arms out. Are they doing a chicken and waffles kind of thing? Because they're doing a chicken and waffles. Thing. Okay. So, like, all right, that makes sense. That's funny. It goes with it. This one I don't understand 100%. So, for Christmas, it's not food. Kentucky Fried Chicken began selling fire logs that smell like they're 11 herbs and spices. So, you know those logs that, like, those, like, starter logs when you don't want to, like, build your own fire. You just throw all the dry wood, and then you put the one log in, light the corner, and eventually your whole fireplace lights up? No, that's a starter log what you're talking about they make the logs that are your fire that last three to four hours those aren't starter logs those are full on burnable logs that will just uh, replace actual wood in your fireplace what the kfc ones yeah they're not starter logs that thing that big is a full is a full kind of log Oh wow, you're right. It is huge. Yeah, th- that I that'll it burn at least t- because it comes in the in the wrapper. That thing will burn at least two to three hours. Now, how long it's going to smell like that is another story. Because one thirty seconds, like it, yeah, it'll be potent right when you start it, and that's great. But then two, you're sent, you become sensory numb with with smell after a while. You know, it, it, that happens real fast when you light a candle. Like oh my god, that smells amazing. And then 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, my God, I forgot I lit, I lit the candle because you're not smelling it anymore. Right. Yeah, like bubblicious. Right. So that that log will last maybe two to three hours, but based on the size of it. But I'm wondering if somebody walks into your house and that's been burning, do they smell the 11 herbs and spices? You guys got chicken? I don't know. I, I'm thinking it would. It's, it's very interesting to me. They only sold for Ninety nine, but they sold out within minutes. I don't even like when Pringles came out with the cans. I only heard about it after it was sold out, and now I hear about the logs after it's sold out. Like I'm not on standby on these companies' websites waiting for them to put out weird, dumb shit for me to buy. Right. But my favorite part was on the wrapper and on their website. It just said, "Please don't put face directly in the fire to attempt to smell more fried chicken." You know. That makes sense. As dumb as you think that is, that makes sense because you know somebody was going to be, and I'm not even talking like intoxication. Somebody's going to be dumb enough to try to get that close, to try to smell it and not realize that just because you're not in the fire, within a certain like foot or two from the fire, you're still getting an enormous amount of heat that's going to like singe your hair and your eyebrows or even burn your flesh. And you're going to have some dude who just slips and then all of a sudden is on the internet for his face going face first into the fire because you know it's, it's like you said after you light a candle and you're like oh did the candle go out and you get kind of close to see if you smell it more and you just keep kind of getting closer until oh it's right. hot because you, pull you go sensory numb smelling is a very powerful sense that you have 
but it goes away really quick when that scent is still around you unless the it's something like chemically potent like a uh, like a gas or uh, a chemical burn you're really not going to smell anything after maybe 30 seconds it's just the way it is. It'd be, it'd be interesting though, like to light it and like not tell anyone, and then have a house party, and be like, and like they don't. It's like that awkward moment where they walk in, they know something's up, they go through the whole party, and then they're on their drive home, and they're like, "Hey, Carol, is it me or did that house smell like chicken?" I was thinking the same thing. And then the next day, you ever go to? Uh, here, here's an example. You ever go you to the chicken guy? Some kind of bonfire, you know, like on a beach, or somebody has a fire pit in their backyard, and you're sitting around. You're drinking or you're dumb enough to do s'mores or whatever that stuff. And then you go home and the next day, all of a sudden you're smelling your clothes that you wore. Like say you were wearing a jacket or a hoodie and you smell it the next day. And it's like, oh, it smells like smoke because you forgot your your senses go numb and you forget that you were in the midst of all of that. And then the next day you're like, oh, my God, this smells horrible. Another example is if you have smokers in your family and if you're staying in their house, you go and you leave. All of a sudden your stuff smells like cigarette smoke. First of all. How dare you insult a s'more? No, s'more's Second not of all, good. Second of all, before I have an aneurysm, you're absolutely right. Tons of times where because it's just the smoke gets on your clothes, and it's the worst is when you like take that hoodie off and you throw it in your car and you drive home on the summer's night and then you leave it in there and you come back the next day and your whole car smells like smoke. Right. That's the worst because it it travels so much. It goes from the clothes, then it's in the cloth seats, and then you got to drive around for two days with the windows open. It's the absolute worst. You, you just, it's, you're right. You, you don't realize it. And what the hell is your problem with s'mores? Um, up until recently. First, you take the mala. Up until, I'll say within the last 10 years, I didn't like chocolate. I never ate chocolate. I didn't grow up eating chocolate. I hated chocolate. And I've eased my way into the world of chocolate because I like dark chocolate. That or chocolate can be healthy for you. That started working for me, and that and then that's the rare things that I'll eat. If something is dark chocolate, I'll have a piece of it, but I won't crave a chocolate bar or chocolate cake or chocolate ice cream or any of that stuff. I never, if I don't have to have chocolate as an option, I'll always go for something else that's not chocolate. And I, I don't know why. It's just always been that way. Oh no, I do know why. Because when I was younger, I got sick on eating Rolos. Ew. Yeah, Rolos were such a garbage candy, and I can't believe that they're still around. Oh wait, and Rolos. Let me double check that. Rolos. They, they're 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 like these. They look like a gumdrop. They're the shape of a gumdrop. They're chocolate, but they have caramel inside. Oh no, I could do a Rolo all day. I no, t- I was thinking Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie no. Rolls are garbage. I hate Rolos. I hate caramel too. I still will refuse to eat caramel if I if I can help it. I know it sometimes it's in. Apple desserts, Everything delicious. You know, it's in sometimes it's in apple desserts, like you know, like an apple crisp or something has some caramel in there, and, and I'll I'll deal with it. But I hate caramel. I hate I up until recently, like I said, I was not a chocolate fan. I will eat chocolate now, but with a s'mores, I hate marshmallows. I will not eat a marshmallow. I don't, so you don't even, even like, like fluff. No, absolutely not. I hate it. I don't like fluff. I don't like marshmallows. I don't even like cereals with marshmallows in it. Like I'll eat Lucky Charms if it's around, but again, I I don't it's seek out. It's all marshmallow. If if I have to, you know, if that's all that's around uh, for breakfast or something, there's a box of Lucky Charms. I'll make do with it, but I will not seek out marshmallows for anything. I don't want it in my hot chocolate. I don't want it in my desserts. I don't want it anywhere in my life. Marshmallows, you fluff. You don't like chocolate. Now you're drinking hot chocolate. No, I'm not really drinking hot chocolate. No, I'll have an occasional dark chocolate piece of dark chocolate, but that's it. Now, the holy the, trinity the, that is the the s'more. The one, the other part we haven't gotten to, and it's the one part I do like about the s'more is the graham cracker. I like graham crackers. I'll eat graham crackers. I just don't want anything on it. There, there's no point to graham crackers. Graham except cracker, for s'mores. Honey made graham crackers are delicious. They have some coated like sugar on it or something or cinnamon. Yeah, it's meant to go pair well with a s'more. I'll just eat them right out. You, you pull it. They're in that old wax kind of uh, wrapping inside the but box. They still do like saltines in, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And you peel it out. I'll just take a sheet of, of graham cracker out. And I'll just eat that. Communist. It's very delicious. It's not. Del- it's not communist. Marshmallows suck. Fluff and utter sucks. A properly roasted malo with a slightly melted chocolate. What's a malo? In between two. 
Okay, if I if you say you've never seen Sandlot, I swear to God. No, I've seen Sandlot. They, they, that's where the, they t- tell you how to make the perfect s'more with the mallows, the marshmallows, the mallow. That's the street term for marshmallow, mallow. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, no, not, not interested. Do not care. I've never heard you be this un-American. I've never heard a show where you have this many dramatic pauses. See, like right here. <laughs> it takes you forever to respond to anything. Because I'm in utter shock. I've never heard anyone hate most of a... a I, I can see people not liking Marshmallow. I can see that. Maybe that should be the title of the show. S'more sucks. I, I don't want my name being a part of it at all. No, because I can see out of the Trinity someone going, okay, I don't like chocolate, but I love a good roasted marshmallow. The gooeyness, the utter fluffiness of it, or the crisp outside if you toast it just right. Or the opposite saying, oh, I don't like marshmallow, but I can always go for some melted chocolate on a graham cracker. You can't go wrong. It's like a chocolate-covered graham cracker. I've never heard someone say, the graham cracker is the best part of a s'more. I didn't say it was the best part. I said it was the only part that I would eat. For me, it was the best part because I didn't like the other two at the time. Now I don't mind chocolate. I've, I'll have some chocolate on it. If if they have a dark chocolate graham cracker, I'll have that. I've never if there's marshmallow that. on it, I get, I'll throw it against the wall or at whoever handed it to me. Get that you, away from me. You know what it is? You're you're the guy when you're sitting around and the girls are there and the one asshole playing Wonderwall around a campfire. You're the guy who just walks up randomly with a stick and everyone thinks you're roasting marshmallow, but you have a package of hot dogs. No, you're now the guy who's playing Wonderwall at a gathering to try to impress women. You're the asshole that every other guy is there and like, look at that douchebag. He's trying to play Wonderwall and be all sensitive and deep to try to get women's attention. It works. No, it doesn't work. There's and, always one. And you're also the There's guy that always one. And you're there. There isn't always one. What party do you go to where somebody just brings out a guitar, starts playing fucking Wonderwall or any other shit by like Maroon 5 or whatever just to try to get women? That doesn't no, no. happen. You're the it guy. Constantly. It, it doesn't happen constantly. You're the guy that's taking that dumb cliche from the internet and trying to p- pass it off as his own unique thought. Like, l- no. let me show you how in depth and inspiring I can be by laying these words of wisdom on you. No, bullshit. You've, like, first of all, I don't see you as a fire pit type of guy. I have a fire out. pit. I'll sit it's there because it's, it's warm. It's never the guy who owns the fire pit that brings out the guitar. It's always the guy who just shows up randomly in sandals and just like a tie-dye t-shirt. Even though there's a million bugs out in the forest and he's going to get bitten alive, but he brought his acoustic guitar so he's cool and he plays Wonderwall and it's the only fucking song he knows. And there's always one girl that sits next to him and sways back and forth. And that's why they made those internet videos making fun of it, because it happens all the goddamn time. It doesn't happen all the goddamn time. It doesn't. If somebody yeah. had that, you know what, this will be a funny idea, then let's pass this off as as this as if this happens all the time, and then other people ran with it and made other dumb videos and fell to trap just like everybody else on the internet as like, oh, this is a trend, let's talk about this and make fun of it, and you fell for it too, because that doesn't happen. Go to any fire pit on the Jersey Shore any night, be like a Tuesday. There's always one guy that it's like play no stairway. There's always one guy who sits there and starts to play it, and either everyone throws something at him or they let him play it because they all the girls. If a start guy showed it. up anywhere near a fire pit that I was at with a guitar and start, he's like he's going to serenade. He's getting the El Cabong treatment because that thing's going right up the side of his head, honky tonk man style. Shake, rattle, and roll right into the fire. Done. I win. And you don't like s'mores. I just don't get it. What kind of what do you do at your fire pits? I sit outside. I'm usually playing a video game. I'm watching something out there, or I'm on my phone. I like so the cold. I sit in the cold. It's nice to have the fire to contrast with the cold. I just sit out there and I have something to drink, and I'm watching TV or playing a game. You're the. <laughs> I'm not the there to have a fire pit. Is to converse around it with many other people and have a good time. Like, wait, you've been to my house, we had a fire pit, and uh, we didn't do s'mores because we were so full of ribs, but that's a different story. Right. i rather, look, if we were going to cook ribs over the fire pit, I'd be 100% about that. S'mores, I'd be like, well, I thank you for the nice evening, I need to go to work. But, like, it's like, you're talking about having a fire, the only reason why you have a fire pit is so you can sit around and play a video game or text, and you're not actually talking to people. Yeah, I don't have people over. And I this sure as hell like- don't go sit by, like, if I sit by the one, if I'm at a hotel that has one... Those idiots that sit around a fire, uh, fireplace or a fire pit in the summer or even the spring, 
there's something seriously wrong with these people because if they're like, oh, they're walking out, they have a beer, they have a glass of wine, they're sitting down there, they're going to converse and have uh, have a good time talking to other people at the hotel. I don't want to talk to the other people at the hotel. I don't want to know these people. The- hotel bar no i didn't go to the hotel bar i'm going to the hotel fire pit if it's out there not when it's hot out when it's cold out when you should be using it and i sit there if somebody else sits down next to me guess what i get up and i leave because you now ruined my good time i don't want other people coming over there and talking because they're not chances are they're not going to talk with me so that's one fine but then two they're going to keep talking with other people and they're not going to shut up and i have to hear about their dumb stories you don't ever just sit there. You First of all, you just talked about at the Christmas party how you sit there and you people watch and hope people to get fired. So if you even sat there and they were talking to other people, you wouldn't want to hear their dumb conversation and laugh at them? Not while I'm at the fire pit, no. Well, if I'm sitting there. That's where you get your inspiration. No, I don't get my inspiration. If I, I'll go and sit by it. I don't mind it. I enjoy it. Like when they have bonfires on the beaches, I, that's kind of cool. Like I'll sit there, but I want a chair. I'm not sitting on a blanket on the sand. Like some kind of plebeian. I'm not doing that. First I'm, of all, stop using big words. Second I'm sitting on a regular chair with a drink, with the fire, looking out and listening to the ocean. That's relaxing. That's very therapeutic. Watching the fire crackle is very therapeutic. Other people coming around here is like, we're from Montana, and they're telling you about their dumb shit. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what restaurant they tried or the Montana tourism list. sites they saw. Same Bougie. thing with the hot tub. Like, I like a jacuzzi, right? If they have oh. them at, at, a, at a hotel and no one's in there, I'll go in it and I'll just sit there with the jets and, and relax. Second somebody else walks in there, I got to get up and leave. Because I don't want to be sitting in, in a jacuzzi or a hot tub with some stranger. And I don't want to talk to them because they always want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to them. I want to sit there. I got the jet going into my back, so it's nice. It, it feels nice. I just want to relax. And they want to fucking talk. Or they You're bring the their kids around. You're the see the kids. I understand because kids shouldn't be in your hot tubs. But you're the guy that gets out when that when when I get in. Yep. And I go, hey buddy, can you hit the jets real quick? Since you're walking past the button, and you pretend to ignore me and keep going. Or I throw something electronic in there. Either one. I don't like you. I've I've judged you so much. You like a fireplace? Fire. I love a fireplace. I love a good fireplace. I'll keep a fireplace have, going all night if possible. Now that I have a fireplace, I don't want to clean it. So like, I used to be a hundred percent against the gas fireplaces. Why? I'm like coming around to it. Well, are you one of those guys that's like, no, it's got to be real wood. Like, I'm going to get wood and put it in there. No, like, my, uh, like, I've throughout my life had both from different family, you know, like, you know, you go to one person, they have the gas, but like, I grew up with a real wood burning one. Yeah. And I liked it. I actually just prefer it. I just like the way, like, I like the smell of like the burning wood. I just think it makes it kind of more homey. Where when you have the gas, you're literally just looking at like, you know, someone lit up a birthday candle it's just you just see the flame you don't get that wood burning smell right it's just the flame so like there's no point i'll just turn the heat on instead of turning the gas on you know i but now i don't ever want to like shovel the ashes out or want to clean my chimney so like i'm i can see why people don't want to deal with you don't it. have to worry about cleaning the chimney really as much as you do the the ashes you don't have a um like some kind of uh drop in the back of your fireplace where you can sweep it in and it drops down to like a container or something where you can empty it out no no and not that never happened in my other in my parents house either because we have a basement or anything which is on a concrete slab huh then you have to get one of those vacuums that they sell like that, that's meant for uh picking up the dyson? ash it makes it easy dyson i don't know if that's who makes it but the shark one of those things. No, because and the, the other thing is too, like I don't have any doors or anything covering it at home at, at my parents' house. We used to, so like, even the dogs wouldn't get close to it. I got nothing there. So like, if it ever like pops and I don't know that, like I'm afraid the ash is gonna come out and like catch my couch on fire because it's pretty close. What brought all this up, by the way? Oh, the fire. You hating marshmallows. Oh uh, yeah, hating it s'mores. Went way downhill to me finding out that you're a bougie, bougie, un-American s'mores hot tub lo- hater. And bastard. because. It's the holiday season. Eggnog. Eggnog no, is gross. Disgusting. Eggnog is pancake batter, is it's, what it it's is. The, it's, it's some kind of not batter. Eggnog with booze in it. There's no point to ever drink right. eggnog. I don't like things in nog form, but that's not important right now. I'm just saying my disgust for eggnog. Uh, I will prefer continue. nog to know about it. Eggnog uh, in the northeast, northeast area, specifically the New York City area, people love a good egg cream. I had that over at home. I hate I like those. It. That yeah, is such an old 
fashion beverage chocolate egg cream like i've seen signs during the holiday season in certain places downtown they would say chocolate egg cream sold here old-fashioned chocolate egg creams and all i think of is that sounds completely disgusting to the point that i will never even try it because i i've had family i know my like my dad loved them and, and like his older relatives when i was a little kid when they were still alive all loved them they loved egg creams and cream soda i can do like one cream soda every five years it's just not a and i'm not gonna me. finish it no, nope. so don't give me anything marshmallows. I'm going to find you a VHS of Dutch just to piss you off. I'll throw it right in my fire pit, and you cannot sit around and converse. Well, actually, you know what? I will welcome you to come sit around and converse as the VHS tape of Dutch burns ever so slightly in the fire pit. A couple other really dumb stories before we take a break. There's something happened not far from where I live, and it was on my way to work that I should have stopped, but I did not. On uh, Route 3, which is the major highway that goes past the Meadowlands, MetLife Stadium, where the Dodgers and, uh, sorry, where the uh, Giants and the Jets play, a Brinks armored truck door flew open while the truck was on the highway and money went flying everywhere. People came to a dead stop on the highway to try to pick up the money that was flying all over the highway. Some people got their cars totaled because they slammed on their brakes to get out and get the money. Oh, yeah. It caused a whole bunch of accidents. Some people, I, I saw a lot of videos of people on their phone running out, you know, onto the highway and stuff. People almost getting clipped by the cars that were that were circumnavigating the cars that had stopped. They were going onto not just the the emergency uh, strip of road on the side. They were going onto the lawn next to that to come around the whole thing to keep going, almost clipping these people that are running around trying to pick up all this money. Now, I'm trying to think, is this worth stopping for? To try to get any of this money. It seems extremely stupid and dangerous. And that could actually cost you your life. By doing this. But is the amount of money that was flying out of that truck worth the risk? I think it all depends on your life situation. Okay. Would you do it? Would you get out? I don't know if I'd get out in the middle. I don't care what my financial situation is. I don't think I would have gotten out in the middle of the highway. I would have come to a dead stop like that. I think I would have pulled over to the right... And then whatever was blowing over towards that side of the highway, I would have picked up. I feel like you just would have pulled over and opened your window and going, come on, blow in here. Yeah, No, I would have gotten out of the car and stood over on the side, but I wouldn't stop dead in the center of the highway like a lot of these people did. If if you don't, uh, if you want to, if you don't believe us or if you want to see for yourself, every news story did did a little piece on it here in the tri-state area so if you can look up any of the affiliates is that, all cash? All is that? Cash. that wintry mix of snow and cash on a new jersey highway a small fortune this is crazy police say a bag with one hundred forty thousand dollars fell through a rear door that had a mechanical issue then another with three hundred seventy thousand dollars flew out i did see hundred dollar bills and fives and tens and fifties <laughs> getting out of the car to pick up money commuters and the brinks driver grab what they can $205,375 recovered, and later, police say another $11,090 was turned in, leaving exactly $293,535 missing, and police asking for more video of what's now a crime scene looking for commuters suspected of theft. Ron Allen, NBC News, New York. I just didn't think that was worth the time or the effort to do that and you know uh, like if the money was flying in the air and you were on the side of the highway and you could grab it that's one thing go ahead do it but not worth risking your life for what could be what could amount to just be like you don't even know what the denomination of the bills are i wouldn't have slammed on my brakes but i would have pulled over and then i probably would have ran into the middle of the street only because some of these other assholes that were you know because they stopped traffic eventually it just seems so dumb because it it feels like you you could get. Dude, killed. I get out, I see a couple ones, I'm getting back in the car and going. But that's Benjamin's the thing you don't know around. the denomination of of the bills. So why are you gonna go? It's like, are are you gonna risk your life for twenties? If there were stacks of hundreds flying around, I would get it, but not for twenties and tens. Anything more than a one, yes. So if it was all fives, you'd go running out there. Like Homer when the beer truck exploded and it was shooting around like sprinklers, you'd go run around, and go tee hee hee hee. I was just going to say that that's one beer each bill. I'm not arguing with it. Yes. Good one. I have a problem, Eric. You do. You do. And we'll try to solve this problem as we go to take a break. A few weeks ago, I got a chance to see Trevor and his band perform uh, live. 
and I managed to uh, get a copy of this CD. I don't think does the CD have a name or is it just called Black Tooth Grin? Uh, the CD's called One Three Five. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's in the logo there. It's a little hard to see, but all right. So the CD's called One One Three Five. Why is it called that? Uh, we played a show at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. They put us on a golf cart to go drive around the the park and promote that we were playing at one, playing at three, and playing at five. And we got tired after about five minutes, so our drummer just sat on top of the golf cart yelling through a megaphone, Black Tooth Grid 135. All right. Where can they pick up this CD? Or just find Trevor on social media and let him handle all that. BTG Trevor on uh, the social medias to get a copy of this CD here. One, two, three, four, five. It's a six... It's a six song. I guess that is that technically an album or is that an EP? I have no idea. We just did six songs. We thought it was good. So the one and I'm going to play for you here going into break is a song that we thought was made up when Trevor told us about it and apparently is not so. It's my the, biggest hit. The song is called Motorcycle and if you care to sing along, what are the uh, what's the chorus to the song, Trevor? When I say motorcycle, motorcycle, you say beer beer beer. So when I go motorcycle, motorcycle, go beer, beer, beer. It's my whole band and John DeServio from Black Label Society is on the album too. He's on motorcycle with us. Well, there you go. Off the CD, 135. BTG Trevor on social media if you want to hit him up about this song. Enjoy. Motorcycle, motorcycle, beer, beer, beer. 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 Let's go. Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. 